Welcome back! And this week, adhesives, or everything you never wanted to know about glue but were too afraid to ask. I don't think I've ever used glue to hold a globe together. Mostly that's that we do that with kind of gluing called welding. But I've never done a special effects job where I haven't used glue in some shape or form, even if it was just making a rig or a jig or a quick prototype. So you might end up with ridiculous situations like this one called Hunt the Balloon, where you have a balloon and you have a brick. How do we join these two things together? Let's look at some of the ways you can do it. Glue! Glorious glue! We're back. Well, I haven't managed to stick the brick to this balloon, or the other way around, but I have managed to stick a quarter twenty bolt to it. So technically, I could now bolt this balloon to a brick. We'll get to that later. But that rather silly suggestion of a brick and a balloon leads us to the most important thing about glue. The materials you're actually sticking together. Are they soft? Are they hard? Are they rigid? Are they porous? Are they organic? Uh, are they made of metal? Plastic? Fibres? Cloth? All of this determines what kind of glue you're going to use. The more, one of the most important factors in how strong your bond is going to be is how you prepare the surface of the materials. So there are three things you need to deal with. Dust, glossiness, and grease and oil. Normally I would recommend get rid of the grease and oil first because if you, if you sand something and it's got oil on it, oil on it, you're going to just grind that oil into the material. So use a lacquer thinner or um, alcohol depending on the, on the material. Get it good and grease free. Then if it needs to, if it's not say made of fabric, I mean you know you don't need to degloss this because it is not glossy. But if it was a piece of shiny aluminum or a piece of glass, um, a little bit of sandpaper, make it so it's got a, a nice teeth, they call them teeth, for the glue to key into and hold on to. Um, and the last thing to do would be blow off any dust so you've got no dust involved. But if you can do those three things and pick the right glue, you will have a strong bond. Before we get into specifics of any particular kind of glue, like the super glue I've got in front of me right here. I'd just like to say there are probably 500 different kinds of glue you can buy, most of which have a very, very specific purpose. And you can glue almost everything except some stuff like this UHMW, high molecular weight polyethylene. Very hard to, to glue anything to this. Mechanical fasteners work much better. Sticky tape actually works pretty well on this. Or Teflon, another very difficult thing to glue. But even for the most difficult stuff, there probably is a specialist industrial glue out there. But let's get to Superglue. I believe Superglue is a Loctite's brand name for cyanoacrylate or crazy glue or CA glue. Um, you're probably most familiar from it from sticking your fingers together. It's, it's one of the best things for sticking people to other people. Um, that's, that's what it lives and dies for. Clearly, you, people use, do use this in emergency, emergency situations to uh, glue themselves back together. They do a um, nice job of using it in uh, surgical situations, though of course their stuff is very, very expensive. Um, it's basically the same thing though. Uh, don't, I don't advise you using it for first aid because you are not a doctor. Anyway, so super glue comes in two different flavors generally. The uh, gap filling or thick superglue, um, thickened superglue, and the water-thin, drippy drip drip superglue. Um, I tend to use the water-thin stuff um, because superglue, isn't, it's not really very good at filling gaps. If you do want to do any f gap filling, what you can do is use either sand, flour, or baking soda as a kind of a structure for it to build upon. So you fill the gap with um, sand or baking soda, then drip water clear stuff in, um, and it'll set very quickly. Talking of setting, the gel stuff sets very slowly. This stuff sets fairly slowly unless it's, it's on a very thin film. I, if, you, if I put it on my, pour it into my hand, the thin stuff, it'll sit there for 25 minutes and not set. If I do that, we all know what happens. I've thinned it out and it sets very quickly because it reacts with the moisture in the air. It's really a two-part glue it's using the moisture in the air 
to react with itself to to set. Talking of setting, if you just can't wait the three or four seconds it sometimes take for, takes for superglue to work, you can use an accelerator such as this. This is the infamous and famous zip kicker. Um, pretty much all accelerant is now called zip kicker, um, even though it's, I'm sure this is a brand name of Zap. Um, it's CA Accelerator. It also comes in, um, you get little kits like these two. These are for bonding plastic. And each one, the, there's a tube of accelerator. And it works as a primer as well. And what you do is, it's a, it's a glass ampule inside a plastic case. You squeeze it, it breaks the glass safely. And it's got a, a what looks like a cigarette filter on the end of it. Um, and you can wipe this onto whatever you want to fix. And it primes it and accelerates the cure of the glue. Uh, you can buy the stuff in larger quantities. I'm not going to spray this because it smells terrible. I'm sure it's not good for you. Um, but it, this will force the cure of any CA glue, any crazy glue, super glue, cyanoacrylate glue. In the process, it does get a little warm. If you have a lot of glue, you spray this on, you may see smoke coming off it. Do not inhale that smoke. Um, it may damage the bond a little bit too. So go easy on this stuff. Um, the other thing is, when you store your super glue, do not store your, store your super glue near this stuff. This is the anti-kryptonite. That doesn't make sense. Um, but this will set off super glue. So if you've got a cracked tube of super glue and you put this in the same box, the vapors get out and they will cure the uh, super glue in the tube. And talking of that, um, you can buy, this is about the largest kind of container of super glue you can get. And I always find that when I go back to use them, they're half full and what's left has gone solid. So what I recommend buying are these little guys. They're, this probably cost $1.50 for four tubes. You can buy them in packs of 10, 20. Um, all different people make them. Um, and when I use them, I regard them as pretty much one-time use. They do actually, will last a few times, but, but they're effectively one use. Throw them away, use another one. And they're always good because they are sealed in the factory and they are actually, I don't know if you can see the end of that tube, it's been sealed from that end with a machine and this end you puncture with the lid to open it. So very economical way to, to use uh, cyanoacrylates. Um, and they, they glue most things. Uh, the only downside is that the bond is quite brittle. So if, if something is going to be hit or have any impact on it, or chipped or bent, um, you'll find that super glue is not your friend here. Um, you can, it's the same stuff that you use to replace the rear view mirror in your car, that little button of metal that is glued to the glass. Um, you use a primer and then super glue. One drop of super glue on a primed clean surface, and it does need to be clean. Another point about super glue is don't buy these. This is just a small tube of super glue inside a big plastic case. And so you can squeeze it. You can't see how much is in the tube. It's very annoying. Um, and you're paying for all this wasteful plastic that's going to get thrown away. You can also buy um, these very, very small and delightful lids and dispensers, which conveniently fit neatly onto most of the most super glue lids. And this way you can get your glue into a tiny, tiny little place where you need it. Um, they come in a variety of sizes. They even give you little tubing. You can pump glue through this tubing if you need to get it into a very small area. And on to cork, which is not really an adhesive. Um, we'll start with the basic stuff. Silicone. This is definitely not an adhesive. Not very sticky at all. Best for putting around your bathtub, that kind of thing. It dries through room temperature vulcanization, which means it takes moisture from the atmosphere and polymerizes itself, cross-linking some blah, 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 blah stuff. You don't need to know why, but it smells like vinegar when it cures. Um, then we have the uh, solvent-based sealant. This, you can kind of use it as a glue. Um, it gives off a smell like gasoline. 
not meant to use it indoors for that very reason, but it will stick pretty well. This is a close cousin of panel adhesive, um, which I don't have any here, but liquid nails, the stuff you put on the back of foam panels and stick them to walls, or um, masonite, that kind of thing, large sheet, thin sheets. Um, this requires um, that it evaporates for it, to, for it to dry and work. So you can't, th this is pretty unlikely to go bad inside the tube because I can't smell it. So the smell isn't getting out, so it's not drying, as opposed to this, which even with one of these on the end of it, which normally do a nice job of stopping uh, the, the, the stuff from curing, this has gone completely hard. And will be thrown away. Oh, while we're talking about cork guns, buy the best cork gun you cheap cork cheap. Stop it. Cheap cork guns are annoying. Um, this isn't too cheap, but every time you finish your little bead, you have to press that button. Otherwise, the material keeps coming out for another five or six seconds. Um, on this kind of one. That's just annoying too. It has a ratchet and a tooth teeth on the back of the plunger. So every time you finish, you have to turn it to allow it to come back a little so it doesn't keep running on. If you buy a nicer one, this has some little springy gadgety do thing inside of it. When you let go of the trigger, it automatically releases and no more goo coming out the end. So for an extra two bucks, I think, get yourself one of these. Um, and they also comes with a, a little stick so that you can puncture the seal inside if it has one. Well worth it. Uh, generally, if you buy a cork gun and you don't lose it, you're going to still own it in 10 years time. So buy a slightly nicer cork gun. Um, the, oh right, and then finally the, this is, this is a cr acrylic latex cork plus silicone. The advantage of acrylic latex or latex, uh, siliconized acrylic latex, is you can paint it. Silicone will not allow you to paint it. Pretty much no paint sticks to this. Even silicone doesn't stick to this very well when it's, been, when it's fully cured. So for everything else, use an acrylic latex. Again, buy the nicest stuff you can. This stuff is, varies between like a buck fifty and three dollars a tube. The three dollar stuff is surprisingly better. Wouldn't you know it? Moving right along. And epoxy, my favorite adhesive of all. What is an epoxy? An epoxy generally is a two-part chemical substance, liquid, solid sometimes, that you mix together and one side sets the other side off. Generally they're called part A and part B. Um, and the joy of that is once you've mixed the two chemicals together, it doesn't require oxygen or evaporation to work. There's, there's often no shrinkage because nothing is leaving the glue like a solvent where it actually gets smaller and hence, hence shrinks. So uh, you're probably familiar with this kind where there's two syringes stuck together. When you press the plunger, the exact same amount, ideally, comes out of each one. You mix them together with a popsicle stick and anywhere between this one is, it says sets in five minutes. That's actually a lie. What it means is you can't use it after five minutes. It becomes too thick to use, but it's not set. It, the, normally the full cure is hours and full strength you get to overnight in almost all cases. Even this JB weld says one minute. That means you squeeze it out and you start mixing it. You've got a minute to use that stuff before it starts growing very, very solid. Um, and that's of no, no use to you. So sometimes you want a 20 minute version um, and it's worth noting that the faster something sets, almost always it means it's a weaker bond. So for example, JB Weld, the most famous epoxy I believe on the planet, partly due to their advertising where they're like, I, my tractor blew a rod and I fixed it with JB Weld. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But anyway, it is good stuff. But uh, it said, uh, I don't know how long it said, it, it says, Sets in four to six hours, maybe. I reckon 24 hours is what you need for this stuff to get to full strength. Um, and you can, same is true with most epoxies, you can speed up the cure by adding heat. 
the hair dryer or warming the parts up beforehand, keep them in a warm room, put them in the sun. Downside to that is they get thinner. They will start to drip. If you warm uh, JB Weld up uh, with a heat gun, it won't burn. It, it won't destroy it, but it'll drip out of the whatever you put it in. Um, however, excellent, excellent stuff. Um, you're probably very familiar with it. You, they also make, I'm not trying to flog JB Weld, I just happen to have some of theirs. Plastic Bonder. Uh, when you mix these two together, it gives a god awful stink. Um, so you know, you know it's working when it smells bad and it smells like it's making your brain cells pop um, because that's got an activator in it that allows it to etch prime into plastics, into ABS and plastics like that, hard, normally fairly brittle plastics that are difficult to, to glue. You still want to do a little bit of sanding so it's got a key to get into, but using a plastic bonder means it's actually there's a chemical reaction with the plastic itself. Um, in some of these, are, they say marine. Almost all of this stuff is basically marine in that it will harden underwater. Not all of it likes being underwater permanently, however. So be careful with what you're... This one says marine epoxy. Is it? Who knows? I wouldn't fix my boat with this stuff. Uh, there's another way of dispensing this um, is to use... You can. This is a concrete crack repair and it's a two-parter. And it's got a nozzle which does the mixing for you. So you put this in a cork gun. Now the downside here is you've only got one nozzle. And this stuff sets in minutes. So you start corking and you go, ooh, maybe I'll need to, oh, too late. This will have set solid and the rest of this is stuck inside the tube. And you, you, I don't know if you can buy new ones of these. Uh, that same thing can be done with, here we go. The JB Minute Weld comes with this little guy, which is a mixing tube. I think you get two per pack. Yes. So here's a Loctite version. It comes with two of those. So you get two chances to use this. It's a fairly small syringe. They, they realize there's no point in giving you a big fat syringe to do this with because you're just going to run out of the mixing tube and you'll be back to doing it the old fashioned way with a popsicle stick. Um, and again, get mix the two things together properly. So what do we learn about epoxy? The faster it sets, the weaker the bond. You can warm it up. So in, in, if you want a, a very slow bond, you can actually put something in the fridge and it will take it days and days and days to cure. No real advantage to that, but you can if you want to. Um, so uh, at the very, very tippy top of epoxy comes Scotchweld from 3M. This stuff, you can see it's, they're quite old. Um, it's a two part. You mix two thirds of this with one third of that by volume. Thank you very much, which is fun to do. Um, it takes about 24 hours to dry. And these two cans came together and they cost me $240. Um, JB Weld, the same amount of JB Weld would probably cost you $35. Uh, but this is used to stick satellites together. Parts of the International Space Station are held together with this stuff. It doesn't mind the cold. When it dries, unlike most, I think all of these, are very, very rigid, so they're kind of brittle, very hard. If you hit them with something, they might crack. This stuff, which has got the very romantic title of 2216 Scotch Weld, is slightly flexible. It's almost like very hard shoe, like the heel of your shoe, kind of rubber. But very, very, very strong. So it takes 24 hours to set up. Um, but if you need to glue a shoe to a window, for example, I would use this. What else do we have? Ah, oh, another fun epoxy is plumber's epoxy or underwater epoxy. This is um, kind of like a Tootsie Roll and you cut it off with a sharp knife and the two parts, the, the white is part A and the, or B, doesn't really matter, and the blue is the other part and you mix it together in your hands. I would wear gloves because it doesn't smell too bad now but it's got a kind of a stink to it um, and, and it's glue, it sticks to your fingers. So wear gloves, um, you just cut off what you want and you can put this, once you've done that, put it back in here and it's good for next time. And this stuff will dry underwater. So literally you can mix it together, dive over the side of your boat, mush it into place and it will set underwater. Um, hence it's often known as marine putty as well. And moving right along to solvent-based adhesives. 
Basically anything that evaporates, gives off a stinky smell that destroys your brain cells as it's doing so, is a solvent adhesive. Um, generally one part. So it's a plastic adhesive, is a, yeah, whatever. Um, this is acrylic solvent adhesive. It comes in two kinds. This is water thin. If you can see it is literally water thin and clear. This is called syrup because it looks like syrup. Um, and the way this works is if you're trying to attach two pieces of acrylic to each other, this actually melts the plastic itself and allows the two pieces to become one. So it makes a very, very strong bond. Um, if you've ever seen a very, very well done acrylic work, you'll notice that there aren't any bubbles where the two pieces come together. The way you do that is you make the, make the pieces very, very, very flat to start with. And then you use water thin, sorry, the water thin um, solvent and you drip it using a dispenser like this one drop at a time and it wicks itself between the two surfaces to be joined and makes them clear so you can see straight through them. Uh, it's a tough thing to do but this is the stuff to do it with if you need to. Um, talking of dispensers, get yourself a nice supply of um, syringes. American Science and Surplus will sell you lovely syringes for dispensing glue. I like the ones with nice thick blunt needles for inserting glue into tiny little places subtly. Um, which brings us to the downside to solvents. One, they stink, they're flammable, and two, they eat a lot of plastics. So if you were to put um, any of these solvent adhesives onto this foam, it would go and melt away. So you have to be very careful about expanded foams in particular, but all kinds of plastics and what kind of damage they might do. Which brings us to my favourite solvent adhesive, goop. I think it's even amazing goop comes in about 9 or 10 or 12. There's shoe goop, there's uh, household goop, underwater goop, all kinds of different things. It's all basically the same goop. I actually phoned them up once to ask them the difference because I needed to do something very specific with goop. In fact, I was, I was gluing a 2x4 to the back of a cathode ray TV, a 32-inch TV that was hanging from the ceiling, and that was the only thing holding it up. So I needed to know it would hold on, and it did. But I spoke to the people at Goop and they're like, it's pretty much all the same. Anyway, it is very, very good. It is stinky. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's not good for you. Use with plenty of ventilation. But it dries incredibly strong and very, very flexible. This is great for things that have to absorb impact. Uh, it's very good for fabric. It's very good for almost everything. The only downside to it is it dries by evaporation. So if you use a lot of this in one place or squash between two, let's say two pieces of glass, that's never going to dry because it can't evaporate. But highly recommend Goop in all its various forms. Moving on again. But before we finish on solvent welding, how about some PVC plumbing? You may well be familiar with this. Um, PVC plumbing is held together by a similar kind of way of using solvents. You use a primer first. Generally it comes in purple so you can see where you've been. I'm not going to join this because I have no need to. Um, you'd put some primer in here and then you'd use some glue on both surfaces and you jam the two together, give them a little twist and they are permanently 100% stuck together. Um, it's a little bit smelly and um, again, good ventilation. As an aside, if you are using it, doing anything with PVC pipe, get yourself some of these. Mix. Getting perfect cut straight ends much, much easier rather than putting them in a saw and having everything fill up with tiny little bits of white plastic. More on that later. While we're still on the subject of solvents, contact cement. Now, the most notable thing about contact cement is it glues on contact. So this stuff, for example, first of all, be aware of the warnings on the top of this can. It says, before use, turn off main gas valve. Because this is outgasses a lot. The VOCs, the volatile organic compounds coming out of this, will blow your house up if you're not careful. So be careful. Read the warnings. Bad for your brain too. 
Anyway, so you have two surfaces. You spread this very thinly using a roller or some kind of a spreader. Or if you're in the industrial business, you would use a spray gun. And then you really get lots of VOCs. Um, and then you wait 20 minutes until it's just tacky to the touch. And then when you bring them together, the two surfaces, both with glue on, the moment they touch, they are married forever. And you cannot move them. There is no repositioning. Hence, contact cement. The other more familiar use of contact cement you may have seen is the, I'm going to just go and advertise 3M's line of spray mount type sprays. Um, there's Super 77, which is good. it just gives you a, a spray of adhesive. It goes all over the place. You'll notice it sticking to your, the hairs on your arms. You'll breathe it in. It stinks. It's not, a, not the best product, um, in my opinion. Then there's 78. It's not super, it's just plain old 78. Uh, and this stuff you can use on polystyrene insulation and it won't eat through it, won't melt it. So it has a different kind of solvent in there. Works very similar kind of way. Then you get to 80, now we're starting to talk. This has the um, 3M's, I don't know if it's patented, it should be, it probably is, spray nozzle so it doesn't, there's no overspray. It comes out in a well, I'll, I'll show you on, this is the top of the line, in my, my estimation. Spray 90. Uh, you can adjust how much comes out from high, medium and low. And I don't know if that comes out. I'll tell you what. I rub it on the floor you can see where the glue went and where the glue didn't go as you can see there's almost no overspray which is a marvelous thing and again you do the same thing you spray this on both sides of whatever material material you're gluing together and then you wait until it becomes tacky and then you bring the two pieces together you pray and you go i hope that's in the right place because you will not be able to move it contact cement Wood glue! Finally, we're at wood glue. So, uh, wood glue used to be made out of horses. Hence, going to the glue factory when your horse got a little bit old. They would boil down the uh, hooves, mainly, of horses. Now they do it with cows. But not many people use high, what's called hide glue, because you can also make it out of the skin of the animal. And out of fish, too, and that just smells terrible. Um, but most of what used to be hide glue, old-fashioned wood glue, in fact, almost all of it. I don't. I think only specialists will will carry hide glue, and that's for people doing restorations on antique furniture, where you need to be need to be able to guarantee that you can get it apart again. I.e., it's not a very good glue. Whereas uh, modern PVA-based glues, uh, this one is Type Bond Two. It's all. They're all pretty much the same. You you get exactly what you pay for. Um, it's water resistant interior and exterior. So. If you glue a Stradivarius together with this stuff, you might get in trouble with the conservatory. Um, yeah, I mean, not much to say about this, really. It's, it's wood glue. Uh, anything that isn't, it, it, also known as yellow glue. But spend as much as you feel happy. I would go for the Type Bond 2 or 3. It's probably even a 4. Uh, or whoever your brand of choice is. Has... Um, Good things and bad things about it. It sets very quickly because it's you're using it on wood. It's specifically for wood. Don't use it for anything else. Um, wood being very porous, it's absorbed quickly and it sets up very quickly. However, if you were to glue this piece of 1x4 to this mismatched piece of two 2x4s, two you can see, well, maybe you can see, you can see there's, there's a big gap in there. So unless you put a lot of glue, and even then the glue is going to retract as it, as it um, dries, it's going to be absorbed into the wood, it's not going to be very thick when it's finished, so you're going to still end up with a gap there. So what do you do? You use a polyurethane wood glue, which is was made, I think probably the most famous brand of this is Gorilla Glue. Um, this is the expanding foaming glue. So what you do, you put the glue on any one surface, put the piece on top, clamp it down, just to, just to be sure, always clamp, especially with wood, clamp it down. Um, and then the, the uh, polyurethane 
formulation will react with moisture in the wood and in the air and foam up. Um, and it will fill all the little gaps with glue. And it'll fill all the gaps and then it will fill the gaps that aren't there. So it'll come dribbling out the side. So that's a big downside to this stuff is it will come dribbling out maybe an hour after you've used it. If you don't mind that though, it is incredibly strong and it fills every void and works really well. Now I notice I said that it dries by curing with moisture. If you're doing this in the middle of winter or somewhere in Arizona perhaps, the wood may be a little bit dry. So give it a little mist with a mister with just some water, get the wood a little damp and it'll help the foaming action and help it'll cure much more quickly. The other thing to say about Gorilla Glue is it's incredibly strong and it's really, really annoying because it will stick to everything. Um, you have to wear gloves. It doesn't matter how careful you think you're going to be. Wear gloves. Always wear gloves. Um, wear gloves anywhere near. If I glued these two together, if I pick this up, I would have to wear gloves because it's going to dribble. I'm not going to see it. It's going to dribble onto the floor. Then I'm going to put my hand in it. Then I'm going to have it on my hand. And you can only get it off before it sets. After it has set, you cannot remove it. So what I find most often is I will kneel in it and then the glue will be in my jeans. I'll kneel down again and I'll, I'll, I'll collect dirt. So I'll end up with a black kneecap that's kind of slightly crunchy. Same with your hands. Your hands will end up being black if you don't wear gloves because the glue goes on, you wipe it off, you think you've got it. And then everything you touch, the dust comes off it and sticks to your hand. And then the only way for it to come off is through manual abrasion sandpaper or you just wait until your skin falls off i mean it doesn't fall off in any way unnatural and unnaturally but as your skin regrows underneath the glue it will come off but so be very 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 careful it's marvelous stuff um but that is well worth knowing it's not often used by people who make nice furniture for the very reason that it's ugly very very ugly it's also not UV stable, so if you use it outside, you want to finish, finish it off by painting it. I think that's all we got for that, but ah, no, no, we don't. There's something else. But wait, there's more on polyurethane expanding foam. Great stuff for expanding polyurethane foam. Not strictly speaking an adhesive, though it is incredibly sticky. It's just a fluffier version of the Gorilla Glue polyurethane glue. I'm sure you're all familiar with this stuff and how impossible it is to get out of your clothes, out of your hair, off your hands. So again, wear gloves. This stuff is tough. Is tough. The other thing to note about this stuff, uh, all three of these are the high pressure version. If you squeeze this into, into, out into a void and then seal it up, like you were putting it around windows, it can generate a lot of pressure and bow windows, especially vinyl windows. You can buy a low pressure version for use with windows and siding. Um, again, the same thing with siding. If you spray this behind siding and it expands out, you'll get a big, you'll get a big bump in your siding. It's also not UV stable. So anywhere the sun's going to get this, so it doesn't look like you're running a trailer park and you're down on your luck, give it a coat of paint. Otherwise the uh, sun will d dissolve it basically, turns it into a powder. Um, you can also buy an expanding version of this stuff. I think DAP makes it products um, that has latex in it. Um, and so it, it's not nearly as sticky. It doesn't expand as much. It's pretty rubbish. I wouldn't bother with it. It, it kind of crumbles under your fingers. Um, I would put up with the annoyance of this spilling out everywhere and getting stuck to things over the latex version. You can also get a fire retardant version to put around chimneys. Um, doesn't go very high. You wouldn't put it on the wood burning stove, for example. It would just melt and smell terrible. And I believe you can get a version that has um, some kind of deterrent to rodents in it. Um, also, I like to keep these when I'm done using a can because I find they get blocked up quite often. And if I have more than a few of them lying around, I can then join them together and make a longer dispenser if I need to. Also, this can was probably used a month ago. It's probably toast. It's half full, but the whoopsie ran out of battery power on there. Uh, I was just going to say that the this stuff will cure down deep down inside this nozzle. So 
Yeah, that's toast. What you can do if you're very thrifty is put a little MEK when you uh, just after you've used it, while it's still sticky, put a little MEK um, methyl ethyl ketone. Very, very, very strong solvent. Very bad for you. Just a drip, a couple of drips. Um, acetone will also work, uh, and you can kind of swill out the little bit that's going to do the bunging up later. Doesn't always work. What I'd like to do is just find everything that needs a squirt of this and go around and fill all the various mouse holes in my shop. Moving on. Few things glue quite as quickly as a hot glue gun. So that's why they're very well used on uh, sets and around prop people and special effects folk. And if you can't wait for that minute or so to go by while you're waiting for the glue to cool down, you can always take a can of dust off, turn it upside down, pull the trigger, and a jet of freezing liquid will come out that won't stain anything. By the same token though, hot glue doesn't like to freeze. It doesn't mind getting cold like that because you're not really freezing it, you're just cooling it down. But if you leave your hot glue prop outside in the winter, you're going to find it's going to fall to bits because it, it, it contracts when it gets cold and tends to pop off. So if you glued um, something to this plastic and you put it outside, the plastic wouldn't shrink very much. The hot glue would shrink and it would just pop off. So beware of freezing overnight. Uh, best use for hot glue I've ever found is jeans. Got a rip in your jeans, get another pair of jeans, cut a patch, stick it on the inside, it'll go through the washing machine. Um, anything fabric-like that's nice and hairy and porous, hot glue really likes sticking stuff that, like that together. If you are, on the other hand, if you are gluing, here's a chunk of stainless steel. If I wanted to use a hot glue on this, what I would do first is my usual prep. So make sure there's no grease on here, there's no dust. Give it a little bit of a key if I can with some sandpaper. But then I would warm it up because steel's not too bad, but copper and aluminum in particular, the heat gets wicked away so quickly because they're such good conductors. The, the glue is kind of already stiff by the time it's making contact with the metal. So you don't get a good bond. It's very easy to pry off. Whereas if you put a blowtorch or a heat, or a heat gun onto the metal first, just get it warm to the touch, um, then put the hot glue on. You'll have a much, much, much better bond. Um, you can also buy a little, um, it's not a can of baked beans, a pot like this, you plug it in and it keeps, you just feed hot glue sticks into it or pellets and it keeps it at the right temperature. So you can then take objects, dip them into the pot and then quickly stick them on. If you were attaching 10,000 marbles to a car, that's the way you might want to do it. So you dip the marble and stick it on rather than having the marble and having the hot glue gun in your other hand. You'd have the, the, the bulk pot sitting there ready for hot hot glue. So as you can see, it comes in Hot glue itself comes in a variety of colours. I wouldn't say that the coloured hot glue is the best hot glue, but if you want to disguise something or you want to use a hot glue stick that matches a fabric or something like that, you can get them, you can get them also with shiny glitter. Um, these are the mini size. Uh, I don't use them very often, but it is kind of nice to have a, a mini hot glue gun every now and again for delicate work. Um, and this one, not only is, a, is it uh, a mini hot glue gun, it has a two-speed high and low setting. Um, and the temperatures on this, 115 deg 220 degrees Fahrenheit or 330 degrees Fahrenheit, hot and high and low. And the reason why that is useful is not so much that, because most hot glue will melt at both temperatures. It won't be quite as runny on low, but it will melt. But it's all entirely possible that whatever you're sticking, ah, here we go, back to our foam insulation again. If I put hot, hot glue on this, it's going to melt it. And the same for a lot of things, plastic bags, that kind of stuff. So you'd use a low temperature hot glue gun for that. Um, this one, again, has a setting high and low on the side. Get one with a high, low setting. I think I probably have eight or nine hot glue guns. And what I tend to do is I tend to keep colored hot glue. If there's a hot glue gun stick, this one is blue, I won't take it out because you have to push it all the way through to get it out. So I'll just leave that gun with a blue stick in it. 
Um, this is uh, the preferred length, so you're not constantly running out. Um, what you can do if you don't have long sticks is hot glue them together. You can take the short sticks and hot glue them together. Um, much easier. Uh, this is specifically for wood. It's a very, very stiff um, and slow setting hot glue stick. Uh, you can also, this is a propane powered hot glue gun. Let me just turn it on. Probably hear it hissing. I can see the I can smell it. Mmm, lovely. It takes maybe two minutes to warm up and it, you can't blow it out. You can use it outdoors. It lasts for about an hour and a half on one refill. Extremely useful thing. You can also buy um, one of these that runs on a battery. But the battery is kind of big and they don't last that long. It's not really the best use. Making heat is never good at what, never what batteries are good at doing. Um, if you buy, do buy a nice one, you can also buy a nice gun. You can also buy specific nozzles. Um, these are just three I found in the drawer. I have a bunch more um, long, thin ones and different shaped spreading ones. For um, they're, they're pretty much a standard fitting. If you, if you can remove this at all, you will be able to fit one of these nozzles on it. Uh, gotta love hot glue. Um, get yourself several hot glue guns. Um, if, you, if you are doing serious stuff, you can buy, um, 3M makes a beautiful hot glue gun that uses a segmented hot glue sticks. They don't, they don't fit in here, they're much, much thicker. Um, and they're primarily used for industrial applications where you're doing production work. Or for making a cobweb gun. If, this, if you take this nozzle and you squeeze out glue, and spray with compressed air at it at the same time, you can make fake cobwebs that then blow up and you, they blow off and onto whatever furniture inside of a set. Looks very good. It's the standard way of making good cobwebs. So look up that online. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll make one of those one of these days. Cobweb gun. But wait, there's more. If you're a fan of As Seen on TV, you've probably seen this little thing. Yeah, unfortunately, one of the downsides to this, as seen on TV thing, is it leaks glue. But it is a UV setting glue and it comes with a little UV... You see that? Yeah, there we go. Mm. Sunshine will also work, but this sticky little goo, put it where you want it to go, it doesn't drip, it's pretty, pretty solid stuff. And then you just play the light on it and within a minute or two, it's set hard. It is actually pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't use it for structural things. I've repaired a pair of sunglasses, lasted about a day and then broke, but that's a really, that's a tough ask for um, a pair of sunglasses. Um, it's very similar to the stuff the dentist uses on your teeth where he puts the machine and it goes ding, 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 ding. And, um, though I'm sure his stuff costs a lot more than this does. But it does work um, and it's instant. So if you can't use a hot glue and you're on, on set, and you've got something that's very delicate that needs just a little bit of something to hold it in place and you can't wait and you can't use super glue because you can, it's going to get all over the place. This is actually quite nice and cures quite nicely and comes with a free flashlight. Love that. But wait, there's less. And that less is Threadlocker. Last but not least. It's barely an adhesive. It's, it's more of a sealant. Um, it's an anaerobic glue. It doesn't need anything to evaporate. Um, what it is, it's to put on the threads of a bolt. Um, when you put the nut on, the mechanical, electromechanical action, they call, they call it, of the two pieces of metal rubbing together, cause the polymerization of the um, thread locker. Most common thread locker is made by Loctite. Sometimes people actually say, oh, put some Loctite on it. They, they're referring to thread locker. Most of it comes in three strengths. Um, removable, which means you can remove it fairly easily. It just, it'll stop things rattling. Uh, Semi-permanent, where you have to use tools, a wrench to get the nut off. Um, and then permanent, where you can still get it off, but it's a lot more difficult. And sometimes you might, if it's a small fastener, you might need to use a bit of heat. That'll soften it, and then you can get the get the nut off or the, or the bolt out. You generally put it on the male threads um, 
and just a little drop will do. It's kind of expensive. Uh, this is 242 um, Loctite. This is the medium strength, so removable with hand tools. That I don't know how much that costs, but it's, you can see that bottle is pretty old. I've been nursing that for a while. You can buy off brand. This is just called Threadlock. Um, I think it came from Harbor Freight. Um, it, it works just fine. If you're all out of luck, you can use nail polish in a pinch. It won't, I wouldn't do it on anything where your life depends on it, um, but that will work in a pinch. It'll, it'll fill up the voids in the, in the threads and stop it from vibrating a bit. If you can't use thread locker, obviously use a nylon lock washer, um, a nylon, a nylon, a nylon nut called a nylon. It's got an insert on it um, or a lock washer. Not a very good idea. Really, lock washers, they, their time has passed. The time of the nylock is upon us. And if not the nylock, then the time of the thread locker. So, how did we manage to stick this quarter 20 bolt to a balloon? Well, because we're dis this is special effects, we're allowed to cheat. So, in fact, I didn't stick it on at all. It's just magic. No, of course it's not magic. It's magnetism. Always pick the easiest, simplest way of doing, thing, doing things. Even if somebody says, go and find a way to stick a balloon to a brick or to a bolt, do it your way. So this works wonderfully well. And I could, I suppose, attach a small piece of metal to the brick and then the balloon would very happily stick to the brick. I don't think we'd be able to pick it up. Um, I'm pretty sure there isn't any glue I would use rather than use a magnet. Or in this case, what I did was use double stick tape. I used a piece of double stick tape to attach to the brick. Then I attached a piece of double stick tape to the balloon. So now we have two pieces of double stick tape that meet. And with a bit of luck, it will either burst or I will be able to lift a balloon off the ground holding a brick. There's always a way of doing it. And sometimes the best adhesive is not adhesive at all. It's a tape. There we go. So, what have we learned so far? Well, first things, pick the right glue. Your glue needs to be compatible with the material that you're trying to glue together. Both, you might have two different kinds of material, like the balloon and the brick. So your adhesive needs to be compatible. Secondly, surface prep. I can't repeat that enough times. I will, because it's boring. Surface prep, surface prep, surface prep. Um, if you've got a nice keyed, rough surface for the glue to get into, you will have a very strong bond. Third thing is really assembly. When they say on the instructions, read the instructions, maybe that's it. Read the instructions on the packet, on the back of the glue, glue box, because it might say it takes 24 hours to dry. So if in 12 hours time you come and take the clamps off, you may have an unforeseen failure that may, may make your day not so good. So follow the instructions allow the correct length of time, surface prep, right kind of glue. I think that's all I've got on adhesives. Let's stick together, shall we? Until next time, good night.